Right guys, what's going on? So welcome back to the YouTube channel. Now, what I wanted to do a video on today is basically how to build your own gym. Now, I don't mean this is in a home gym. I mean, this is the business that I actually created before I went on Love Island. Um, how I did it, the process, and I'm gonna throw some clips in so you can see the whole process of the gym getting built. And I've got some pictures as well that might give you a better insight. Right guys, so this is the front of the building. So you can see my big beautiful shutter door, move, lift, sweat, repeat. Scope Fitness on here. We are unit C, okay. We're in, an, in a little industrial estate here. So it's quite close to Newcastle city center. Now you walk in here. And why have I not got the lights on? So you walk in. Now, first thing we've got on the right is Barry, who is our sports therapist. He's locked the door. Lock the door. He's got your first little toilet in here. Ooh, turn the lights on. So, nice little toilet. La la la. Probably nice other one at home. But hey ho. Um, so, got the entrance, got Barry's massage room on the right as you first come in. First unisex toilet on the left, slash disabled toilet, another logo. This is, a, this is the big shutter that you've just seen from outside when I walk in. Now, you can see on the left, we've got a massive rig. So, loads of squat stations, loads of pull-up bars, all your plates, all your bumper plates, and then this big red car. Got your little dip station, your scales for me to do check-ins. Now as you walk further forward, you can see how long the carpet is. Got the rings there. Got the nicest, prettiest sign ever, reshape and condition. That is what we do for people. We reshape them and condition them. So at the front, you can see this is like the dungeon, what we call it. This is where the games are made. So you got your cables over here. Cables are probably the only thing that I probably need to update. Um, you'd light dumbbells. Well, I say light from 2 to 25. Another little quote on the wall. And um, you've got your main squat rack here. You've got your benches, adjustable benches, and you've got the big bad boys here, so the heavy dumbbells. This space here is pretty much where any of the PT is done, any of the transformation groups, stuff like that. Then you walk in here, we've got the female shower downstairs, so a little shower room again, toilet, all great. Then I'm going to take you upstairs. So, upstairs, another little coat. My legs are hungover. Makes you feel really nice after leg day. So, come upstairs. We've got the mirror. And if you can see, it's a lot easier to see in person, but write some of the classes on the mirror and wipe them off every day. And this is upstairs. So, again, we've got a lighter rack of dumbbells, 225, and then a short stack there. Some more benches here. Got some assault bikes, the death machines, everyone hates them. Roll machines. I've got some lighter barbells, more class work. Um, skis upstairs, some more kettlebells in the corner. Some boxes, downlighting. This is where you see all of the selfies on my Instagram. So this is upstairs, I'll just show you a little bird's eye view of downstairs, so you can see down here, this is the red carpet, there's me again, ugly mug. Now upstairs we've got the men's shower, 
that changing room. Again, great, 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 great. And we've got a little lounge area here. Cameras, so I'm checking everyone. Um, so you've got a little fridge with all the stock in. Some bad boy grenade and bear bells. Not those in the bottom of the fridge. And yeah, all that. And just a little cupboard with all the stock in where we sell the hoodies. That is a full gym here. So, first of all, what I'm about to say is, I didn't do this, as in, I did not build the gym and then just start personal training. I definitely had three years, at least, experience before I jumped in and took the, took the leap of faith and started my own business and actually created a site. Obviously, I already had my own business, because as personal trainers do, we all start a brand on our own name usually most of the time and then go from there. So I first started in a gym group, which was one of the best things I ever did. Um, the gym group have a policy where you can basically work hours, 12 hours a week, and this covers your rent. So when you are starting your business, one of the hardest things is having outgoing straight away when you've got no income, nothing coming into your bank. What do you do? Now the gym group have this process where you can either choose to pay rent or they can allow you to do 12 free classes. Now obviously, when I was PTing loads of hours during the week and doing these extra 12 hours on top, it was a nightmare. But when I first started and I came out of sixth form and I dropped out of uni and I thought, what do I do? Like, how do I, how do I start this and get it going without having costs straight away? The best thing I did was obviously go to the gym. They gave me this 12 hour contract offer. And then, yes, I had no money when I first started, but at least I knew that I had nothing which I was having to pay out straight away. So I just had my savings and then just got the ball rolling in a gym. And I can't actually thank them enough for giving me that opportunity. How did I get the money to start this place? How did I get the money to get this unit and everything like that? Now, a big one. I was, I got myself to a point where I was personal training so much that there was not enough hours where I could, people were messaging me to get in for sessions, like I had new clients, I had new inquiries all the time and it got to the point where I turned around to my dad and my stepmom and had a conversation and I just said look, I have people wanting to train for me, I do not possibly have enough capacity, there is not enough, enough hours in the day and I was doing 6 in the morning until 8 or 9 at night every single night. And it is relentless. So I got myself first of all to that point where the income for my monthly income was very, very high before the loan anyway for the average 21 year old. And I got to this point through social media and just banging out client sessions and transformations and it built up to a point where I couldn't cope with it anymore. So obviously my income was very high. There was a little sacrifice. I got myself a nice car. Um, I had that and it was very, very nice and I sold it and used all of the money which was a big chunk of money just to put in this place so that was, straight away, that was a big, big chunk of the money to get this place Again, saving up for months and months and months as much as I possibly could and as soon as I had the idea to get my own gym in my head I pretty much cut out all costs I stopped going out with my friends I missed the lads holiday the year before there was loads of little things which I sort of missed out on. Um, I had an ex-girlfriend at the time who, to be honest, I probably was so focused on getting this place and I had that goal in my head so much, it probably caused a lot of strain on that relationship. And it also, I wasn't bothered about anything. The only thing I had in my head was get the gym, get the gym, get the gym. And as well, I had my dad as a financial helper. And the thing is, Love Island now, has given me the opportunity because I've had so much work from Love Island and I've obviously my income has went has increased massively again. Now I've had the ability to fully pay off my dad from the money that he lent us to give me the little bit extra that I needed for the gym and now it is completely paid off for and all the machines are paid off for everything and it is the best feeling ever. So pretty much work a lot, save up a lot, get to the point where you have enough money to do something where business is booming sell your car and drive around in a shitty little van. How long did it take to build this place? Actually building this place and ripping it apart and doing all of the, I mean, the second floor was not there. That was built by 
me, my dad, my stepmom, my brother, like everyone chipped in. But the second floor we put in ourselves and we actually did it in six weeks and two days, the whole process of turning the gym from a unit into an actual gym and a training facility and it looks absolutely amazing. Those six weeks were literally night and day. Um, it was it was ridiculous, but I mean, you get out what you put in and honestly, they were the most enjoyable six weeks of my life, even though I did nothing but work because every single day I could come in and see something building and something progressing and seeing everything and I cannot thank my family enough because my dad, my stepmom, my stepbrother literally were hands and knees helping me paint the walls in grey paint. This wasn't done really by like anyone specific. <coughs> what made me open the gym? I started doing boot camps in a church hall in Pontyland right next to my school when I was about 17, I think six form time and I always knew what I wanted to do. I mean, I'll see if I can put in this video the first ever scope logo that I created on Vista Print to get some little shitty business cards. But like the how much it's evolved over the years has been completely different. But I always knew that like this was something that I felt strongly about. It was my passion, it was my dream. And I also followed some like fitness YouTubers, so Christine Guzman, who has Alpha Legion, and I watched his videos every night in bed, pretty much trained all the way through sixth form. Sixth form was when I really caught the bug of fitness and where I first wanted to train, put on some size and do some body fat and all of that. And I caught the bug, I watched his videos every night and I watched him over the course of like two years, like open his own gym and open his own clothing brand and start businesses. And the business side always motivated me much more than the training. I always had the gift of clicking with people like I never was necessarily like there is a million trainers who are amazing trainers out there but not everyone can actually get into someone's head and actually start finding out what works for them because my training I guarantee someone could do one session and they might not like it they might not like being that way but there is a million ways to train people so if you have the capabilities of seeing what motivates someone intrinsically within themselves like what is that one thing that like gets to them and that's what gets them going and that Next question, what is the hardest thing about running a gym and starting a gym? Now, it's very, very simple, staff. Staff are the hardest thing to find, good staff, trustworthy staff, staff who are as motivated as you. If people are willing to go the extra mile and if PTs are willing to send a text at 9, 10 o'clock at night saying like, how was your food tonight? Did you have what you said you were gonna have? Did you stick to the plan? Or if those PTs are willing to give extra five minutes to like show someone a stretch that is going to take away the lower back pain when they leave here, it's not going to put them off the gym and it's not going to give someone psychological barriers that, oh, the gym is not for me. And if a PT is willing to do them little things, those little things, it adds up to a much bigger picture and they're the ones that are going to push on your business. And I've eventually started to find some people now who really are willing to manage to make it this far thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video now if you want to comment below what you want to see me create what you want us to see what you want the videos to be about I've got a couple of travel vlogs coming up and a lot more fitness stuff but just comment below what you want to see thank you for watching much love appreciate it as always give the video a thumbs up not down up love you all